What's up Mzanzi? You are listening to the world's best podcast presented by One Ifra Digital Media Awards Food from Mzanzi's very own Farmers Inside Track podcast. I'm your host, Octavius Pandil. Now genetic testing is opening new frontiers in dairy farming, enabling farmers to enhance productivity, improve animal health and adopt sustainable practices. Well, in this episode, Dr. Simon Lashmar, a leading expert in animal breeding and genetics at the Agricultural Research Council, will be joining us to help farmers understand the practical applications and advantages of genetic testing in dairy farming. Lashmar's knowledge provides valuable insights into the ways genetic testing is impacting the industry. Simon, welcome to Farmers Inside Track. It's absolutely lovely to have you with us today. We will be diving into a very interesting topic and I will be kicking off with the very first question. Can you tell us what is genetic testing and how is it applied in the context of dairy cattle? Hi Octavia, thank you so much for having me. In terms of genetic testing, what it is is that it's a method where we look at genetic changes, which we also sometimes refer to as mutations or variants in the DNA or the genetic makeup of animals. Some of these genetic mutations or variants can either cause disease or expression of certain desirable or undesirable phenotypes. And it's obviously important to know where they come from. So from basic genetic principles, we know that our DNA profile, so our or an animal's DNA profile comes from their parents. So that means we inherit about 50% of our DNA from each of our parents. So these mutations and genetic changes in our DNA profile are inherited. So how it is applied? So the first step would be to collect a sample. So these samples can be anything from blood, tail hairs, tissue, or even milk in the case of dairy cattle. This genetic material is then used to isolate DNA from the sample. And then once the DNA is isolated, the genetic code is then read and captured from this isolated DNA. So from this genetic code, we can then use this information for various applications downstream. I'm curious to know, Doc, what types of genetic testings are actually available? So the type of genetic tests available will obviously depend on the purpose um, for the farmer, but the types of genetic tests can broadly be divided into three types of applications. So the first one would be phenotypic selection. So this is usually for consumer preference of desirable traits. So one such example would be horned status in cattle. So whether the animal is horned or polled, this has been of interest in the last recently. Or selecting against diseases. And these usually are single, what we call single gene mutations. And then the second type would be DNA profiling and parentage testing. So this is generally for animal identification and herd management. And this is usually based off of marker panels with a few but informative DNA markers. And then the third type would be genetic selection for improved performance or production, which usually involves multiple genes, generally with an additive or a cumulative effect. And these are based on marker panels with up to 800,000 markers. Doc, what are the main genetic markers associated with higher milk production? So when we look at genetic markers, there are currently two predominantly used DNA markers for these applications um, I previously mentioned. And those are called microsatellites and single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs for short. These markers are usually incorporated in what we call panels of a few or many informative markers that have been validated. So for microsatellite markers, these are not usually larger parts of the DNA. So we usually only require about 10 to 15 markers, whereas SNPs we can type or capture using what we call SNP chips that can include up to 800,000 markers. So it's important to note that mold production is what we call a polygenic or an additive trait. So this means that this trait is controlled by many genes with a cumulative effect. 
So identifying single genes associated with milk production can provide some information that can be used to contribute to or enhance the accuracy of selection for high producing animals, but no single gene is responsible for improved milk production. So previous studies have identified several key genes that may contribute, and these include genes such as the DGAT1 and the prolactin genes, which have been found to influence milk production. Another important thing or last important thing to also note is that these genes that are responsible cumulatively for higher milk production may also vary between breeds. Currently, in terms of genetic tests that are available for milk production, include various milk protein genes that can be tested. And examples of those are the A2 beta casein, which codes for certain that may have certain human health benefits. The kappa casein, which is an important gene for protein yield and percentage in milk. And then the beta lactoglobulin gene, which is a major whey protein gene. So from our various service providers, there are some single gene tests available. But as I said, an important thing to note is that improved milk production relies on the additive effect of many different genes. Can you explain how the identification of these markers translates into practical benefits for dairy farmers? So the identification of DNA markers that are associated with um, a polygenic trait such as milk production is usually done through a methodology that we call genome-wide association studies. So what these studies essentially do is to find these genes by matching the DNA with the recorded trait. So if I can just give an example, if a high-producing cow as a certain combination of copies for a set of markers and a low producing cow on the other hand as the opposite combination of copies for these markers. These specific markers are said to be associated with milk production. So how this can actually be translated into practical benefits is we can actually include these associated markers into smaller but more affordable testing panels that can be used by farmers to select higher producing cows. Alternatively, we also have genomic selection that can be applied in which a genomic breeding value can be estimated for an animal. And what this is, is essentially just the genetic merit of an animal calculated from the effects of all the markers simultaneously for a specific trait such as milk production. Doc, I'm very curious to know, what are the initial steps as a dairy farmer that they should take to start using genetic testing in their herd? So on-farm animal recording in terms of pedigree and performance recording is definitely an important prerequisite. Genetic information should not be a standalone, but should validate or support existing on-farm records. That's one thing to note. So the DNA and the phenotypic information or the performance records go hand in hand. So the first step would be to conduct a detailed herd analysis. In other words, to do careful assessment of the farm's goals and market conditions, and then to decide on the purpose of including DNA in your breeding program. The second step would be to identify the appropriate herd management tools, in other words, the genetic tests, to develop the optimal breeding strategy, And this step may also include choosing the best service provider for your genetic testing. Thirdly and lastly is then to action this plan by focusing on testing the right animals. If I say right, I mean those animals that will be the most profitable. In other words, the right replacement differs and bulls for the next generation. What kind of investment is required for genetic testing, Doc? And what are the potential returns on those investments? So the initial investment of genetic testing will be obviously the per animal costs of genotyping or testing. And this can obviously become expensive and wasteful if the entire herd is to be genotyped. For most farmers who are thinking to include genetic testing in their breeding programs, the motivation to test should be to find the low producing animals in their herd and to remove those animals if a return on investment is the goal. 
So the return on investment will come in the form of accelerated genetic progress, saving of the associated costs of raising excess replacement animals, and just being able to develop alternative revenue sources by, for example, breeding lower quality animals to, let's say, beef semen. How frequently should genetic testing be conducted to maintain an optimal breeding program? So the frequency of testing will depend on the purpose for the testing, as well as the application of the DNA information. Initially, genetic testing will help to inform decisions on which cows to keep, buy or call. And then obviously after that, DNA information will continue to assist the farm in making certain mating decisions and to reduce the risk of, for example, inbreeding and certain recessive genetic conditions. Certain applications will, however, be routine. For example, if we look at parentage testing, this will obviously need to be done every calving season. Are there specific breeds or types of cows that benefit more from genetic testing? In terms of breeds, definitely all dairy breeds can benefit. So in South Africa, our main dairy breeds are the Ayrshire, Jersey and Holstein. So all of these breeds can definitely benefit equally from genetic testing. In terms of the type of animal, genetic testing is more useful for young animals. So testing at a young age provides animals with reliable genomic information to allow quicker decision making. In other words, to select the superior animals at an early age and remove inferior animals rather than as soon as possible. Doc, we've been speaking about the benefits and just learning a little bit more about genetic testing. But I want to delve into some of the common challenges or limitations that farmers might actually face when implementing genetic testing. Can you share a little bit more about that? Some of the main challenges, I would say, um, is definitely a limited understanding of farmers in terms of how the genetic tests work. And this may stem from a lack of a general understanding of genetics. Genetics is a very abstract field because we can't really see it with our eyes. It's microscopic. It is sometimes difficult to understand some of the concepts involved in genetic testing. Definitely a second one would be the costs involved. Also the practicalities of the sampling, the application of the results to decision making. Many farmers receive genetic testing results, but they don't necessarily know how to use the results or how to interpret it. And then definitely also the benefits or the values to their business. Another limitation also pertains to the lack and inaccuracy of pedigree and performance recording. DNA testing, as I said previously, is not supposed to be a standalone strategy but the data yielded from testing should be incorporated into dairy producers' existing breeding and selection strategies. So if this is not in place, it will be difficult to improve with genetic testing. So if I can give an example with parentage verification, the farmer must provide candidate or possible bulls that may be fathers, and then the DNA information is used to identify the most likely one through a process of elimination. And this can obviously not be done if the correct pedigree-based information is not in place. You know, that makes complete sense, Doc, as you are mentioning some of the limitations, and especially around education. I think that's such an important component to understanding genetics and also encouraging farmers to understand it a little bit more. How can farmers overcome these challenges to successfully integrate genetic testing into their breeding program? I definitely agree with you that we as researchers, we can overcome these challenges by definitely raising awareness and improving on informal education opportunities for farmers, etc., In terms of the farmers overcoming these challenges, I would say Only genotyping the animals with known or potential problems. In other words, if we're looking at genetic testing for disease-causing variants. Also, the farmer should start with genotyping animals that have the biggest impact on the herd and not necessarily to genotype animals that will be culled in the near future. 
and then always, always, always to implement accurate pedigree and animal recording. We as animal breeders cannot emphasize enough how important phenotyping still is in the age of genomics. You have mentioned specifically informal education and the importance of that and as well as what the role of researchers within these things. But maybe let's delve into some of the misconceptions or myths that you actually think that farmers will have about genetic testing in dairy cattle. What would you say, what are some of those common myths or misconceptions that are out there? So that comes to mind. One pertaining to misconceptions by farmers and the other one pertaining to misconceptions from the public. Firstly, in terms of misconceptions among the farmers, is definitely that the availability of genetic or genomic information make on-farm recording less important, unnecessary or redundant. And this is definitely far from the truth. Genetics should be used as a tool to support or enhance the accuracy of on-farm management and selection, but it should definitely not replace it. So just because we have these genetic tools, it doesn't mean that the phenotyping effort should fall away. In terms of misconceptions or myths from the public, that is definitely, I would say, is that the use of genetic testing changes or somehow modifies the DNA of the animal and may create, as we know them, GMO animals. However, it's important to note that genetic testing is used as a monitoring, management and selection tool. We use it to see what genes or forms of genes are present in an animal and then use that information to make better and more informed decisions. Therefore, genetic testing does not change or modify the DNA of the animals, but it's simply used as a tool to monitor, manage and select better animals. Can genetic testing contribute to more sustainable and environmentally friendly dairy farming practices? Identifying and selecting traits such as feed or production efficiency and environmental adaptation, this will ultimately, for example, improve our resource utilization, so better using our animal genetic resources. It will also reduce feeding costs and also minimize environmental impact. So genetic testing can contribute to a farm sustainability through the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the need for frequent earth replacement. And finally, what should farmers look for when selecting a genetic testing service or provider? Thank you. That's a very interesting question. The cost of genetic testing will definitely be a deciding factor for farmers. However, the accuracy and reliability of the results should be a key factor. You cannot really put a price on accuracy and reliability. And interesting enough, many of the farmers do do their own homework and they do their own comparative analysis and validation by sending the same sample to multiple labs just to check, which is a good idea as well. If we talk about reliability, this also refers to turnaround times. Animals are often sold or auctioned off based on genetic results and the generation of results is therefore time sensitive. And then also after sale service is very important and crucial factor. As I previously mentioned, genomic data or the results of genomic testing may be unfamiliar to farmers that are just starting out with testing and support in explaining the results or providing advice on the application or implementation thereof is definitely crucial. And then lastly, of course, certain service providers also provide unique testing, tests that are not offered by other service providers. And some of them are even willing to work with the farmers to develop new tests, which are tailor-made to the farmers. Well, thanks so much, Dr. Simon Lashmore, Animal Breeding and Genetics Researcher at the Agricultural Research Council. For more on the topic, visit www.foodformzanzi.co.za. And that's it. wrap. Remember to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform. From me, Octavius Pandil, our technical producer, Megan van der Fend, and the rest of the hashtag Team Food from Zanzi. Thanks for listening. Life in South Africa can be a lot. I mean, scroll through Twitter for a minute and tell me I'm wrong. 
Thank God for South Africans though, right? We're inspiring and even on the bad days, we fight back with a smile. That's why I love Food for Mzanzi so much. They're not ashamed to celebrate the ordinary unsung heroes who work every day to put food on our nation's tables. Go to foodformzanzi.co.za and never miss an inspiring story.